Hello. In this video, I'll explain to you the first method of creating pipe networks in InfraWizard, which is converting AutoCAD objects into pipes. And to do this, we'll use the Create Pipes command. First of all, you should know that InfraWizard can create pipes from two types of AutoCAD objects, which are lines and polylines. So if you have arcs, splines, or any other type of objects that you'd like to create pipes from, you should first convert them into polylines. Here is the base plan we're going to use throughout this tutorial series, and I've created a set of lines and polylines to use them in this session. This is a line object, and this is a polyline object. And I'm going to convert all these yellow lines right now into our first network. I'll click Create Pipes, then select a couple of them as a start, and press Enter. This will open the Create Pipes dialog. I have two options for creating the network. The first is Existing Network, and it's disabled because I have no networks in the project yet. And I have the option to create a new network. I'll call it FF, and it's going to be a pressure network. I'll click OK. Now I've got this couple of pipes. You can see that InfraWizard has changed the color of them, and there's a node entity created. I'll double click it. It's a dummy node because this is a pressure network, but I can change its type, of course. And I've got here the pipe, and another node here and another one there. You'll notice that there's one junction node here because the two lines were sharing the same endpoint. So if I move this, you'll see that both pipes are connected to it. I'm going to undo it. So to get your pipes connected, you should make sure that the endpoints of your lines are accurately coinciding with each other. For the pipes, if I double-click this one, you'll see that InfraWizard has assigned a default material, a default diameter, and default invert levels of zero value. And I can change all these properties using the Edit Pipe and Edit Group commands. Now let's try creating more pipes from the objects we got. I'll click the same command, Create Pipes, again. Then select some of our objects. You can see that this line ends at the same node we've just created. and we have a curve in this polyline also. Now let's give it a trial. Now I have two options to choose from because I already have an existing network in the project. So now I can choose either to add the new pipes to this existing network or to create them in a new network. Just to complete my network, I'll select this option. What you notice here is that because this line was ending at the position of this node, InfraWizard connected this new pipe to an existing node. If I move this node now, you'll see the pipe is connected to it. But if the line end has no existing node, InfraWizard creates a new node, just like what happened in all the remaining ends. One thing to notice here, and I left this on purpose to show it, is that if I move this node, you'll see it is not connected to this pipe. Let's go back for a while and find out why this happened. It happened because this polyline was not split at this point, and this is an important thing to bear in mind when you're converting polylines into pipes. Each single polyline will be converted into a single pipe. In my example, this is one polyline with many vertices, so it became one pipe with the same vertices.
If I want InfraWizard to make these pipes connected, I have to break this polyline at this point. I'll use the break command. First point, second point, and here we go. Now I have three entities sharing the same endpoint, which is going to be a shared node. Now let's repeat the command, selecting my lines again. Okay. This time you can see that we have three pipes connected at this node because they were sharing a common endpoint. Another thing to note is that I had a curve in this polyline, and because InfraWizard can only have straight segments in a pipe, this curve was divided into short straight segments with additional vertices. You don't need to worry about this. InfraWizard will select the right segment length when distributing the vertices to resemble the curve with a negligible difference in length. Now we've created these pipes. And if, for example, I want to create a new pipe connected here, I should make sure to use the object snap when drawing the line so that this new pipe will be connected to the existing node. We can see that the new pipe is connected because we used object snap. I'll just undo this. We still have few other polylines to create pipes from in the same way. This pipe should be connected to this node. I can select entities this way. No problem and it will not repeat itself. Okay. And here it is. I'm just making sure they're connected, and it's always good to check after creating pipes. And here is my first network done. Now let's have a look at the default properties that InfraWizard assigned to our new network. For a pressure network, the default node type is dummy node because it's less likely to have structures in a pressure network. You notice also that the pipe matching property is set to center line so that if you have two connected pipes of different diameters, they'll have the same center level at the node. This is a bit different from the defaults of a gravity network. If I create a gravity network, just as an example, it's not part of my ultimate project. You can see the difference. This is not a dummy node. You can see that the default is a simple structure with a circular section like a manhole. And this is the default outer diameter and you'll notice that the pipe matching at node is set to soffit. Of course, I can change all these properties here, but InfraWizard tries to save you time by setting the suitable default properties that will work for like 90% of cases. And this is a good way InfraWizard streamlines the process of creating networks. Let's use Manage Networks to delete this network we've just created. And this is the first one we are working on. Now let's use the Layers panel to change the color of the network we created. If I go here, I can find the layers of FF Network. I have Plan Anno FF, and I have Plan Node FF, and so forth. So if I want to change the color of this network, I can just change the colors of these layers. I'll make it red color, 
and also for the notes. Now you can see that it just changed the color of the whole network to red. This is everything for today's session. We learned how to create networks from AutoCAD objects and what to consider while creating them and knew about the default properties. In the coming videos, we'll try importing networks from external data files in different formats until we have our whole project established with all networks. Thanks for watching and see you soon.